Welcome to another Blue Team uh, challenge courtesy of cyberdefenders.org. Uh, this time we will solve the Red Line Blue Team challenge. So it's an endpoint forensics category. Uh, uh, to be specific, uh, this is a memory analysis challenge. So we'll use the combination of volatility 2 and volatility 3. So this is the short background about the challenge. Okay, so you have to download it. And the password is this one. So once you have downloaded it and unzip it in your uh, volatility uh, machine, you will get this memory dump that mem. Uh, of course, the the questions are here. So actually, I've solved them all. So we'll walk them one by one. So uh, at first, uh, I'll show you how to use volatility two to solve this, and then later on, we'll switch to volatility three. Sounds good. Okay. All right, for the question one, what is the name of the suspicious process? So we are able to solve this in this one. So uh, to do that, uh, of course, to use volatility 2, uh, you can use, uh, we have to uh, point it to the file uh, being analyzed, in this case using dash F, uh, and memory dump, that mem, and since we don't know the profile, to use yet so you could do kdbg scan okay so this will take a while I'll just forward the video okay so it has completed here and we can see its profile is win 10 x64 1904 okay so now that we have that we can use it Okay, let me just cancel this so dash dash profile equals win 10 x64 19041 so let's try the basic ps listing it should be able to parse that if we are to, if we have provided the correct profile uh, let me just enlarge the screen okay it's weirdly slow and right so of course ps listing uh there's not much uh you can clear there uh, not unless you you know you're familiar with the usual uh, windows processes so to give you more context how to find um, a malicious process so or suspicious one uh, let's check the PS3 so to show the parent child relationship all right there you go so remember our answer earlier so remember our answer is this one one etx.exe so if you'll notice uh, it has no parent but the the suspicious thing is that it's spawning around the ll32.exe all right that's how we got this answer using the ps3 analysis okay and then what is the child process of the suspicious process yeah just what I showed you earlier, it's spawning around the LL32.exe. Alright. Okay, and now moving on to the next question. Question 3. What is the memory protection applied to the suspicious process memory region? So, remember we're going to find such using memory analysis. Uh, it's by using a malfine tool. So, again. Uh, of course, the first thing to do here is uh, create a directory for the dump. Oh, I, I already because I already did uh, did this lab earlier, so let's do a dump too, and then let's do a mal find here. Mal find this dash dash dump dot directory then 
point it to down two all right and let it run and we will get the answer so this is actually a very easy challenge so but it uh it kind of refreshes you into the basics oh sorry dash dash dump dash dear oh sorry about the syntax error all right Alright, now it's loaded. And as you can see here, uh, it's 180x and the memory protection is set to page execute read write. Cool. Okay, number four, what is the name of the process responsible for the VPN connection? Okay, so since we are dealing with net connection, so the module to use is net net scan, right? Net scan. Okay, give it some time and I'll forward it again. Alright, it's done. So, since we are dealing with uh, VPN connection, so it's worth checking the connection going to the external foreign address. So, as we can see here okay we have here this is the only foreign address notice here uh, the only external IP here uh, is going to this IP 204.79.197.203.4 so by this process uh, tuntusocks.exe and going back to our process tree uh, what should you notice here? Tuntusox.exe is spawning, spawned by rather outline.exe. So that's how we were able to find the answer. Okay. okay next five, what is the attacker's IP address? So we are able to find this one, 7791. So Going back, so remember we run the net scan uh, using volatility tree. Uh, let's go back in there. And uh, yeah, so that, that connection is actually caused by the suspicious process. Um, that you call this one etx.exe that we found in the number one uh, question so where is it yeah it's somewhere here right all right oh sorry this is the volatility true to output so let's go down so this is the volatility tree output all right, so it's somewhere here. One etx. Seven to seven. All right. Ah, uh, this is kind of dizzy of course I could just easily grab it but yeah I'm just showing you that the pain and the satisfaction using uh, volatility tree with your uh, eagle eyes all right where is it okay able to find it it's right here right so all good all right so next Based on the number six, based on the previous artifacts, what's the name of the malware family? Alrighty. 
So actually for this one, we could just simply look it up in the virus total. And pretty much it will give us the answer due to the community uh, contributions as well regarding what that IP is doing. Okay, just a little bit uh, loading there. So yeah, I should give this machine more more memory. But yeah, I forgot. It's All right. So search it up. And as we can see, it's a very malicious IFP. So, what other things can we uh, can we gain from this one? Relations. Right, it's very slow, really. Hang on. All right, so virus total is not giving us anything. So, since we are dealing with the red line challenge, so another one is to do Google. And of course, malware, the IP, and that some Google keyword uh, kung fu, and uh, it will give us this one: Redline Info Stealer, which is actually the answer. All right. Uh, and the next question: What is the full URL of the PHP file that the attacker visited? So we are able to get this. So in a to be able to get that, simply run a string search strings dash a so mem then we'll grab that IP 77 91 that 20 that should do the trick all right so it has completed uh, doing the string searching and we're able to find this one and this is actually the answer all right and last but not the least so a file scan so what is the pull path of the malicious executable so of course uh, we're going back to 180x.x so for this one I uh, will be using uh, I forgot so windows that file scan right this one windows that file scan and we could just do a simple grab excuse me we could do a grab for the 180x so this should give us the answer again I'll just forward it out all right so now uh, it's able to find that and that's how we find the exact path so it's actually drive c users tamam app data local temp and this one right so hope you learned something and memory analysis is really cool and it's really the the first and foremost artifact that we are to capture uh, when dealing with malware incidents because uh, you'll be able to pinpoint exactly the malicious process and from there we could uh, identify network connections the related files it's really powerful so i hope you learned something so until the next video